Today I want to talk to you guys about the DJI Digital FPV goggles and specifically the antenna setup differences on the version 1s and version 2s. Now there are some changes here you need to be aware of. If you're using the version 2s with the DJI Digital FPV ear units, the changes are important but they won't affect you dramatically. However, if you are a FPV version 2 owner and intend to use it with a rumoured DJI FPV drone in the future, there are some things Things you absolutely need to be aware of before considering upgrading the antennas because many of the ones on the market today will not work. Now just before we get into this I want to say if you like what you see please do consider hitting that subscribe button. If you find the information useful there are links to the DJI Digital FPV goggles, the ear units and potentially when it gets released the FPV drone in the description of this video as well. Anyway let's get on with this. The first thing we're going to do is take a bit of a look at the differences between the FPV version 1s and version 2s and then explain the the antenna differences and some important information about upgrading those antennas as well. Okay, so taking a closer look at the goggles themselves and then the differences between them, both sets of FPV goggles, version 1 and version 2s, have 810p displays, which are 1440 by 810. They both have a built-in DVR and they both have a 4 antenna MIMO setup. However, the version 2s have a different setup to the version 1s, and I'll talk about that a little bit more in a minute. Both goggles can control the system over the ear, i.e. control settings on the ear unit, and they can bind up to 5 ear units plus audience mode when in use. They both can have a video output option, but it is different depending on if it's the V1s and V2s. They both support analog video input via a 3.5mm jack, but there is no analog receiver in either the Version 1s or the Version 2s. Both goggles support focus mode as well as all the other features that the DJI drones have. Taking a closer look at the specific differences between the Version 1s and Version 2s, the V1s and the V2s support OcuSync 2, whereas the Version 1s supported 5GHz, the Version 2s can support both 5 gigahertz and 2.4 gig. Now all of the DJI Air units use 5 gig only and whilst the version 2s now have this new option to work on 2.4 gigahertz this is for future use with an alleged FPV drone. The current Air units do not support 2.4 gig so when you are using the version 2s with the FPV Air units they will simply be on the 5 gig only and this is something important you need to remember as we move on to talking about antennas later. They both as I've said have 810p screens, the version 1 supported 2 to 4s power whereas the version 2s are 2 to 6s and DJI give you a battery with the version 2s which they didn't with the version 1s. The version 1s had HD FPV at 720p up to 120 frames a second and the new version 2s can support that up to 8. 10p. So what they've done is moved the FPV resolution up to the native resolution of the displays. Both goggles are compatible with all ear units but only on 5 gigahertz because there are no 2.4 gigs models and both can have a form of video out either via the smart controller or via USB. I'm not going to touch on that too much in this video but it is something we'll touch at on more videos in the future. However the Vision 2s have a new feature that can share via a smartphone. Now moving on to the antennas and this is where things get a little bit more complicated but I'm going to try and explain this as simply as I possibly can. Now taking a look at the version 1s first of all, it is a 4 antenna setup as I've already said and it has 3 antennas which are capable of TX or RX and 1 antenna which is fixed RX. So the bottom right antenna will always be receive only. That antenna never changes and will always be just a receiving antenna for the signal. You then have antenna 0, 1 and 2 which can be either TX or RX depending on what the system chooses and the goggles will actually choose a pair of these antennas to use depending on the signal quality basically diversity. In setup one the system will choose the bottom left antenna and the top right antenna for TX and RX. It will disable the top left and then simply use the bottom right for receive only. In setup two 
the unit will then move to the top two antennas for TX and RX and disable the bottom left antenna. And depending on how strong the signal is, the system will simply choose between these two setups. And it's either setup one or setup two. And it allows the system to choose the best antenna setup depending on the signal the system is receiving, just like diversity on any other receiver. Since the release of the FPV version 1s, we've seen a number of manufacturers come up with third-party antennas. Omnis, such as the TrueRC Singularities, or patch antennas that replace the front panel, such as the Crystal HD from iFlight. Now, the patch antennas work with the top two antenna ports, and then allow you to put standard Omnis on the bottom, or the Singularities simply replace the existing DJI antennas. The one thing to remember with all of these is they are all fixed 5 gigahertz antennas. They are single band, designed to be used with the version 1 goggles and the standard 5 gigahertz ear units. Taking a look at how the patch antennas work with that diversity setup, depending on what the goggles thinks is best, it will either choose the two patch antennas to be TX and RX, or it can choose the patch antenna to have one side as TXRX and then use the Omni at the bottom and disable the other side. And the system can switch between these two configurations depending on what signal is the strongest and what it feels is best. Now, the nice thing about this setup is it gave you the best of both worlds. You could have a single patch on TXRX whilst having a signal Omni and then have the final Omni on receive, or it could switch around and put both patches on TXRX and then use just the Omni for receiving. And again, it will choose this based on the diversity setup within the receiver. Moving over to the V2s, and whilst they may look the same, we already know that DJI have made some tweaks internally with the extra 2.4 gigahertz band, and they've also tweaked how the antennas behave on the goggles as well. There is no longer that diversity switching, and you now have two fixed receive and two fixed transmit antennas. The bottom left and the top right are transmit, the top left and the bottom right are receive, and the left hand side no longer switches over like it did on the other goggles. It simply remains fixed to transmit and to receive. Now, looking at how this will actually work with existing patch antennas, it is going to mean a slight change in behaviour. Whereas before, the diversity on the version 1s could choose either between both patches, being TX and RX, and the one Omni for receive, or choose one Omni receive, one Omni TX RX, and one patch only. On the version 2s, though, it's going to remain in that last setup. The one patch on the left hand side is always going to be receive, and the one patch on the right hand side is always going to be transmitted transmit and then the bottom left omni and the bottom right omni are transmit and receive as well so it is going to result in a slight change of behavior now this is a setup very similar to what was on the version ones but it is going to mean people could see a slight difference in performance between the two systems in the most part, I'm not expecting it to be dramatic, but it could have an effect. Now, there are some things you could do to get around this. If you did find putting the original patch on the version 2s and it didn't behave the same, you could move that left antenna from the top to the bottom port to make both of the patches transmit rather than transmit and receive. But you've not got that TX and RX on them anymore. You've simply got them transmit only. Now, the other big thing to take into account with this is the frequency. As I've already said, all of these patch antennas are designed for 5 gigahertz only. The new Vision 2 goggles can support both 2.4 and 5 gigs. Now, if you're someone using the Vision 2s with just FPV, this really isn't going to be a problem because the FPV ear units are only single band on 5 gigahertz as well. However, if you're someone who's going to buy the Vision 2s and use them with this rumored DJI drone and use them on 2.4, if you were to fit a patch antenna, you could actually have major signal problems. The antenna, whilst would work, it's not designed for that frequency band. And depending on what you did with the bottom antennas, you could have close to very little range at all. If you left the original DJI antennas on, you would probably okay because the originals are actually now dual band and whilst they look the same as the Vision 1 antennas, they are not. The Vision 1s are 5 gigs only. The Vision 2s are 2.4 and 5 gig but if you were to swap out the top for a patch and the bottom two for say the singularity you're not going to get 
anywhere near the performance on 2.4 gigahertz that you would expect. So if you're someone who is buying the version 2s to use with the digital FPV system, you'll be okay. But if you're going to buy a set of version 2s and fit a patch antenna and use it with the DJI drone, it is not going to work. And at this point, do not upgrade. Now, the chances are there will be new patch antennas designed for the version 2s in the near future, which again support 2.4 and 5 gigahertz. However, there is always a compromise in these things, and having an antenna that is dual band may not perform quite the same as an antenna which is designed specifically for one. Now, it's going to be interesting from an FPV point of view how these patch antennas work on the version 1s compared to the version 2s. You can always get a small fly lead and extend the antenna cable, or the chances are there might be enough antenna cable to actually move it to the bottom already, depending on what antenna you're using. But it, there is going to be a slight difference in the behavior between the goggles. It's also going to be interesting to see how they perform differently, how these changes that DJI have made act in the real world and if anyone who's had the version ones with FPV will feel what the difference is like with the version twos without that antenna diversity switching and having that fixed transmit and receive antennas rather than it picking the pair that it feels is best. Now that is pretty much it for this video. I just wanted to quickly put it together to explain the differences. If you find this video useful, please do consider subscribing to the channel. As time goes on, there will be more videos coming up on this and I'm sure you'll start to see more and more reviews on these antennas on the version 2s as time goes on. This really was more a technical overview of the differences on the high level of how the actual system switches between the antennas, real world expectations and real world uses may see different results and people may find the version 2s actually work better this way than the version 1s. It's nothing fundamentally different but it is enough that people could see a little bit of a change. Now if you found this video useful please do consider hitting that subscribe button. Don't forget to hit the little bell next to it as well. If you would like to support us there will be links to the DJI Digital FPV goggles, the ear units as well as when it's released this up come in DJI drone as well and it is only by you guys using those links am I able to keep making videos like this. Anyway that's it for this one thank you for watching and when the FPV goggles finally get out into the hands of us over here I'll try and give you my thoughts on them as well.